Thank you for staying with us here on This Week in Louisiana Agriculture as we continue to meet the candidates running for governor of the great state of Louisiana. Joining me now is someone who should be familiar to you, especially if you've received some of that unclaimed property, Treasurer John Schroeder, who's also a Republican candidate for governor. Treasurer Schroeder, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, look, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to even be uh, in the in the mix. The, it's a, it's a very humbling experience, to be honest with you. I, I, I believe heavily in service and giving back and, you know, just being uh, in the process is exciting to us. Well, let's talk about your life of giving back, as you mentioned. Uh, a little bit of your background, you, I mean, you were born in the New Orleans area, Jefferson Parish, but also uh, served in the military. Tell us a little bit about your background before entering the, the political arena and going into the state legislature. Yeah, it was a while. I mean, I'm 62. My, my wife and I have been married 38 years now. Uh, but I was born and raised in, I was born in New Orleans, raised in Jefferson Parish. I actually went to the North Shore in Tangibaho when I uh, went to Southeastern to play football. Uh, where we where I met my wife, she got a degree in education. I got a degree in criminal justice. Um, went in the army right after that. It was uh, under the time when Ronald Reagan was the president, and um, you know we were in a tough little economy. And it's it's, it's a diff it's a whole long story why and how I did it, but I did. I went in the army and uh, ultimately got into infantry, military intelligence, and then I became a CID agent and mm -hmm. worked uh, narcotics. Um, across several states and it was, a, it was a fun job I enjoyed it and uh, as I tell people it's not always about putting people in jail I really enjoyed um, really engaging people and helping people uh, because it's a it's a you know it's a it's a bad problem in this country and and I did that in my 20s and mm -hmm. it's just as bad today as it was back then and when President Reagan coined the phrase um, the war on drugs, but anyhow, you know, in my late twenties, my retina hemorrhaged in my right eye. Mm. I was at the hundred first Airborne Division, and um, everything was really rocking along really well. We had both had our careers rolling and had uh, having having kids, and uh, but as I tell people, God had a different plan for me. We came back to Louisiana uh, for a short while um, while I began my construction business. I was a narcotics detective in Ascension Parish, and um, I did that for about 15, 16 months, and mostly undercover work, because that's what I enjoyed doing, and, um, and then just decided one day, we had our second child, and I watched, I was watching everything change. We went from carrying snub-nosed 38s to these crazy looking things like nine millimeters, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it was scary. It was scary back then. If, if you told somebody to stop on the street, they stopped and very respectful, believe it or not. But, you know, so I saw the changes coming. I was there. So I got in the business world and 32 years later, um, my wife and I have had a lot of small businesses. We do a lot of business with mom and pops. We're in the construction business. I'm in a real estate development business. You know, we've been in the laundromat business, the tan and salon business, the grocery business. I mean, every small business. Uh, at one time or another over the last 30 years, Ellie and I have participated. But uh, then, you know, I was about 47, 48 uh, when term limits kicked in uh, for the legislature for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I ran for that open seat in Covington um, in St. Tammany Parish and representing um, St. Tammany and a good portion of Tangeville Parish. And I used to joke with my colleagues in the legislature that the majority of my district was rural agriculture land from cattle and crops and mm -hmm. uh, yeah I've represented Covington but that was about the extent of being in the city mm -hmm. you know so you know St. Tammany and Tangibaho very rural parishes although we are a suburb basically or bed bedroom community mm -hmm. to New Orleans but you know so we've spent our entire adulthood uh, in business uh, my wife's a retired uh, uh, teacher and administrator she's been building houses for the last 12 or so years and we're very active. There's not too many things we haven't done in our community, and it's a it's a privilege to serve. And I try to just, you know, as I tell people, I like representing those that aren't represented. You know, I come from the 85 percent rank, and we know what it is to 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 live in Section 8 housing. And mm -hmm. you know, my first home when we got out the military to tell you how much money you got paid when you're in the military was in a trailer park in the sugarcane fields of Donaldsonville. Mm -hmm. You know, and we couldn't afford nothing. But, uh, 
you know, family helped us do that. But, you know, here we are. I sort of prove that it's not what you make, it's what you save. You know, we've had a good career in politics. I've always taken the approach that I'm here to serve you and not be served. And that's, that's really what draws me that, that it, uh, look, I said this earlier, I believe in community service. And, and that comes in a lot of different ways. Some are very private, some are very visible, and there's everything in between. And, and Ellie and I uh, do that in, uh, in, in many different fronts. But obviously being a state treasurer is a little more visible than helping the poor people or doing whatever you do back in your communities. But I, I like representing the state um, and bringing some a fiscal conservatives conservatism to the table, which you typically don't see, because I understand what the business people go through and have to invest a dollar and earn that dollar back plus to pay your bills and pay your mortgages and pay your employees and then turn around and do it again. You know, that's that's a unique feeling. You know, it's a, it's a unique responsibility that you just you have to experience to know how that feels. So I know what the farmers go through. Mm -hmm. I know what all the people in, in, in business and in the agriculture world are going through. It's, a vol it's volatile at times, and you can't control what goes on in government. What I try to do is bring some normality to it, and I treat it every, every bit like a business. And you hear people say that a lot, that government needs to run like a business. Well, in a lot, many respects, it does. You brought up about service and that being important to you. Is that why you decided to run for governor? Was there one little aha moment where you said, this happened, I need to be the one to help steer this state? Well, look, I'm, I would never say I'm the one, okay? And it really had no, nothing to do with who else was in the race or anything like that because, heck, I didn't know who was going to get in the race. It really came, comes down to I spent nine and a half years in the legislature. I spent eight years under Bobby Jindal. And um, as, a, as, a, as a conservative, a fiscal conservative, that's not political. That just means I don't spend every dollar I have because in, in, in by my definition, if you have a dollar and you spend a dollar, you're broke. If you have a million dollars and spend a million dollars, you're broke. Well, that's what government does. If you did that, if Farm Bureau did that, Farm Bureau wouldn't be in existence. Only government can exist in that because they don't, they don't really answer to anybody. You know, they just get a new check every month or every year. But, you know, that experience taught me um, just how much government doesn't operate like you and I operate every day. And not, and not just necessarily in a business, but how you run your household. If we would run government the same way we, we run our households or our businesses, we would be so far better off. Uh, but we don't. So, you know, I spent almost... I spent eight years under Bobby Jindal, another two plus under um, John Bell Edwards until I decided to run for treasurer because, look, I was the budget guy. I mean, if, if anybody wanted to know anything about the budget from a legislative perspective, they came to see me. And um, I studied my way and worked hard. I say worked hard. It was something I naturally gravitated to. I, I like the finances part. Even though my degree is in criminal justice, I tell people this is simple math. Simple mathematics, one plus one equals two. It doesn't equal three, you know. So I gravitated towards that whole process. I pushed back hard on, on, on your behalf and, and the citizens' behalf because somebody needed to. And I think the check and balance is important. You know, I think sometimes a little confrontation is important as long as it's handled in the right way. There's never been a disagreement that I've had that I couldn't turn around and go sit down and have a glass of tea or a, a Coke Zero with, with, with somebody, you know. So relationship building is key. Working with each other is key, um, which you, I brought all those talents from the business world with me. And then, you know, then when Senator Kennedy became a U.S. Senator, um, you know, the treasure seat was open and, and I was interested in the finances of the state and figured I'd, I'd have a better position to, to, to voice my concern, and, and look, I do. As the Constitution allows me the, the flexibility to, uh, about, uh, on the finances of the state, but I can't make anybody do anything. It's strictly, it's strictly influence, you know, and it's, it's an, I'm, a, I'm the financial advisor, basically, and we have a team of people, and we advise the legislature. We advise those who want to listen, and you can't give somebody, mm -hmm. somebody who advice who doesn't want to hear the advice or don't even, doesn't even want the advice. So, you know, um, 
but I, I enjoy that part. I am a numbers guy. You know, I, I tell people the state capital wraps around one word. It's M-O-N-E-Y. Uh, we get sidetracked on a lot of different issues, but as you saw the legislative session that just ended, it's all about the money, sir. Oh, talking about money, agriculture is an $11 billion a year yeah. industry for the state of Louisiana. As treasurer, you understand the importance of having those tax dollars roll over here in the state. Tell me a little bit about how agriculture would fit into your plan and vision for this state as governor. You know, I, it's, it's agriculture, I mean, arguably the, the biggest industry we have, and, and this is what I tell people all the time. If you're a farmer, if, if you're in a timber business or you're in a seafood business or what, whatever uh, business you're in that, that you're basically living off the earth, it's important to you. And that's the, that's the attitude you sort of have to have. Your business is the number one industry, whatever that is, you know, and, and I sort of take that approach. So, man, when you say agriculture to me, I think very broad, you know, from timber to farming. Now, my wife's from Iberville Parish, mm -hmm. you know, um, all big sugarcane farmers. You know, my, my brother-in-law, my, my sister-in-law is an Uso. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to say I know everything about mm -hmm. the farming business, but, but I've been going into White Castle for, what, 42 years now. So... I, I, I know it's big, but it's, but it's big to every individual, is, it's big, and you have to sort of treat everybody equal. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I've worked real hard at doing that. You know, access is equal, the rules need to be the rules, but we really just want government out the way. You know, government has a role. I don't see government having an expanded role. My job, you know, I tell people I believe this state needs a CEO. Somebody goes to work every day, not to figure out what more government can do. I want to know what do we need to do to help agriculture, to help the farmers, to, to, to help um, you know, the timber industry guys, just whatever. What do we need to do better? You know, and sit and listen. I don't have all the answers, um, but who does? I don't think you're going to find a governor that's an expert in agriculture, expert in, in the chemical industry and oil and gas and education and, and infrastructure and insurance. And I mean, I could go on and on. That person doesn't exist, you know, but you do need a CEO type who knows how to listen, who knows how to bring the assets to the table and figure out what do we need to do. You know, I would, I would rely heavily on the agriculture community to tell the governor, hey, governor, this is what we need. This is how we get there. But look, we have to promote this state also, and I believe that we have to take care of the industries we have. We spend too much time talking about bringing the industry in. Well, what about the industry we have here? What about our farmers today? They're mom-and-pop uh, business people, no different than the guy opening a barbershop every day. So what are we going to do to get government out the way um, to help you and not hinder you? You know, the red tape is ridiculous. We're stuck in the Stone Age when it comes to technology. I want to see state government provide services to the taxpayers that are efficient um, and, and is as least expensive as possible and do it in a, in a way that is a service and not a hindrance. So there's a bit of a hindrance between you and the, the governor's seat right now, and that would be the fact that there are six other candidates in this right. race. And there's pretty sh I'm pretty sure there's going to be a runoff based on what that looks like. You're one of five Republicans. What will set you apart from the other, five, other four Republicans and allow you to make that runoff? Well, look, I, I, that's going to be left up to the citizens of Louisiana, and I would just tell them you, know, you have to look at holistically at 62 years old, the experiences that Ellie and I bring to the table, because this is really about teamwork. And, and I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for my wife, Ellie. I mean, she's a rock star in herself. I told her one day after watching all the commercials, I walked in her office one day, uh, you know, she runs her uh, uh, construction company. I say our, her, her construction company. Um, I told her that maybe you ought to run for governor. She laughed at me. Because Ellie's, Ellie's talent is, is beyond, mm -hmm. is just well beyond the average person. So this is about teamwork. And this is about what my wife and I bring to the table. Because it is important that, that the wife has a, um, has a role. So I think uh, holistically, 
I think I experienced. I think my military background, my law enforcement background with certainly the, the crime problems we're having today, my degrees in criminal justice, I know crime at a high level. And, um, you know, I hold myself to a high standard. Um, I believe heavily in, in accountability, which, um, which you have to have through transparency. And I've walked that walk. You know, you can get on a Google tonight and read. You're not going to find any articles on Treasury, um, any negative articles or, or, or in our companies. Um, we've done it the right way. You know, it's been a tough road, a tough road to hoe, but that's what the majority of people go through. I, I, want, I want to represent the majority of people, which I don't believe is happening, and which is why one of the reasons I'm sitting here. You know, it's the 85 percentile that make this, that make this state run. And um, I, know what they, I know what their plight is. I know what the plight of business is because I've done it. I've, I've invested a dollar. I haven't talked about it. I've done it behind the scenes every day for the last, I don't know, I'm 62. I, obviously, I wasn't in business when I was two. But, I mean, obviously, for the last 32, 33 years in business, I had a seven-and-a-half, eight-year career in law enforcement and, and the military. That's a lot of experience with Homeland Security and hurricanes and, and making decisions. And making decisions in high-profile situations where, where life is at stake, okay? I've, I've done all that. So we, I believe I have the experience. It's just a matter of what the, the public wants. If you want somebody who's going to go to work every day, I sort of, as I tell people, it's like going to work five Mondays or six Mondays a week because that's how I work. Every day is a Monday in my world. And uh, I enjoy it, though, and I don't need anything from anybody. I don't believe in transactional politics, meaning I want to change the, the perception of, of politics in general where it's a pay-to-play, because it is. And I will stop that. It doesn't have to be that way. I don't believe in trans transactional politics where, where you do this, I'll do that for you. Or, you know, we just need to do whatever's right for the citizens of the state. That's what I bring to the table. You know, my promise is, is that every decision I make will be based on one thing. What is best for the citizens of Louisiana, period. Not what's best for me, not what's best for you and your industry, but what is best for the citizens of this state. Um, and, and if you just stay focused on that and, and pay attention to what the needs are for other people and, and work on that daily, we can get there, well. you know. We have until October 14th for yeah. sure. Thank you so much. He is Treasurer John Schroeder, candidate for governor for the great state of Louisiana. And you'll have a chance to meet the candidates at the Louisiana Farm Bureau Convention held in New Orleans during the gubernatorial forum. We'll have information about that on our website at twilatv.org. Now be sure to stay with us because coming up next, we're going to introduce you to a teacher who really knows how to grow in education. The Twila Boost is next. Stay with us.